Okay, I think we should be we are live Mmm delicious. Okay, so let's talk about what we're doing today. Well, I'm experimenting I love to experiment. So let's take a look. We're doing online exercises number one this is a live English lesson. Yes, I'm coming to you live from my home. What are we studying today? I think that's a great question. Okay, let's quick do one quick check to make sure that I am actually live. Ah, I see the green dot. I'm live. Okay, so today we're going to use online exercises to test and improve our English. Ah, in the comments I see Bunny Beth says here, Welcome. All right. And we're also going to explore and explain vocabulary. So in the online exercises, there are they're all quizzes, right? And sometimes maybe they'll have words that we need to look up. We can do that. And of course, we're going to have some fun. <laughs> that is the point. All right, let's see. Okay. So let's take a look. What are we doing? We are going to use this website. It's easyenglish.com. And it has English quiz quizzes, right? It's a great website. And there are quizzes with five answers, A, B, C, D, E, right? So for example, this one is, let me move it so you can see, how many days are there in February? So that's the question. And it's looking for an answer, right? So we have to answer the question. How many days are there in February? So A says there are 28. Uh, B says they are 28. C says in February there are 28. D are only 28 days. Or E there in February are 28 days. So uh, this is the example for now. But the next one will be the, the start. When after I read the question and the answers, I will play music. And the music will help you <laughs> to relax and look through the answers. Aha! Uh -huh. I see... Mar Maria Antonetta Pellegrini is here. Hello, welcome. Merv Chelan Alp is here. Hello, hello. Okay, so today we're doing online quizzes, right? So I have a, a website, it's easyenglish.com, and they have a lot of quizzes. So let's do the first one together, and uh, we will move forward. Okay, so the question, oh, oh, I almost forgot. Whenever I do quizzes online, I have to put my glasses on. Ah. Okay, here we go. So, how many days are there in February, right? So this line right here means that we're looking for a response to this question, okay? And you guys are welcome to comment and choose your answer. And if you have questions, let me know. Okay, so option A, there are 28. B, they are 28. C, in February, there are 28. Are only 28 days. There in February are 28 days. So let me play a little bit of music. And ah, Mustafa RZ is here. Hello, hello. So take a look at the answers and figure out and give me your answer. What is the best response to this question? Here's a little bit of music. Okay, and since this is the test question, so I can show you how it works, I'm gonna go quick, all right? So here we go. How many days are there in February? Well, there are 28. That's what I'm gonna choose, right? Now let's check, and let's see if I'm correct or incorrect. Let's push this big, huge check answer button. Aha, it says, right. Your answer is A, there are 28. So how many days are there in February? The answer is A, there are 28. Okay, wonderful. And we can take a look. And I'm gonna talk about the different answers and hopefully I can explain why they're, they aren't correct. So here we go, how many days are there in February? Well, we're just using the same words in the question and we just turn it around. How many days are there? Well, there are, right? There are 28. Right? Ah, Olga Svetova says hello. Hello, hello. B doesn't work because it says they. They would be like people, right? Or, yeah, we're not looking for people. We're looking for how many days. 
All right, so they are 28. Eh, B doesn't work. In February, there are 28. Hmm. This one seems like it would be almost right, but all we need is the there are 28. Uh, D, it says, are only 28 days. Eh? Uh, no, that doesn't sound right. E, there in February are 28 days. Well, here in E, the, the words are out of order. We need there are. And you could maybe say in February there are 28 days, a longer sentence. But the answer is A, there are 28. Okay, ah, Burham Ahmad says, good to see you, teacher. Welcome to YouTube. Thank you. Nice to see you, too. Okay, so let's take a look. Let's go down and push oh, the next question button. Mm -hmm. Here we go. All right, let me line it up. All right, so we have five choices, A through E. And here is the question. We need a response, okay? What are you doing with my bicycle? Is the answer A? I'm riding yours to the park. B, am I fixing the flat tire? C, I fixed the flat tire. D, riding it. Or E, it's not your bicycle, it's Mary's. Hmm, what is the most appropriate response? So I'm going to play some music, and you let me know your answer in the comments, and then I will choose my answer, and we'll see if it's right or incorrect. Hmm, here we go. All right, we have lots of answers. Wonderful, you guys are busy. Let me move the comments thing up so I can see your comments. Woo, we have a lot of E's. Hmm, well, since there are so many E's, ooh, might be D or E, woo, right. This is kind of uh, sometimes a little tricky, right? And I think we can only pick one because the website is going to tell us just one correct answer, right? Woo. Even if we get it wrong, we'll still learn something, right? Okay, so let's see. What are you doing with my bicycle? So the situation is, you know, someone walks up and says, Hey, you have my bicycle, and what are you doing with it, right? So the other person might say, do you think they would say, I'm riding yours to the park? Eh, kind of sounds funny. Am I fixing the flat tire? Well, this is set up more for a question. I fixed the flat tire, uh, it would be I am fixing the flat tire, uh, riding it, ooh, that sounds pretty good, and it's not your bicycle, it's Mary's, ooh, I like that one too, so I'm going to have to pick, oh no, the pressure, the pressure's on, okay, let's see, what are you doing with my bicycle, it's not your bicycle, it's Mary's, I like that one, ooh, I like that one, hmm, but I also like D, what do we pick? Let's see, there's, and we have to look, because sometimes they put little grammatical mistakes or they don't put apostrophes and that would make it wrong. Uh, I think maybe they wouldn't like D because it's kind of, a, it's not a complete sentence. So I'm gonna go with E. Let's see if I look silly as the English teacher or if I'm correct. Here we go. Ah, hooray, yes, okay. So the answer is E. It's not your bicycle, it's Mary's. Yes, Lilia Andri Andrichuk says there's no subject in D, right? So it would be a, a very informal answer, right? And I think in this quiz, they're looking for more formal answers with complete sentences. Way to go. Okay, so here it is. What are you doing with my bicycle? And we need a response. Answer is E. It's not your bicycle, it's Mary's. So we have a complete sentence. And the person's like, hey, what are you doing with my bicycle? And the other person's like, what are you talking about? It's not even your bicycle. It's Mary's. Mm -hmm. So D, just like uh, Lilia Andrichuk said, there's no subject, right? It's implied, right? It's implied that I'm saying I'm riding it. But if you just say riding it, it's incomplete. I fixed the flat tire. Sounds okay. But it would need to be I'm fixing. 
I am fixing the flat tire. The present progressive, something's happening in the present. B, am I fixing the flat tire? Uh, well, we have a period at the end, so it's a statement, but it's set up to be a question, right? I'm riding yours to the park. Well, it would be I'm riding your bicycle to the park. So the answer is E, it's not your bicycle, it's Mary's. Wonderful. I think it's time for next question. Let's see, here we go. Olga Svetova says, wouldn't it be correct anyway? I mean D. Hmm. And I would say it depends on the context. Since this is an English website, it's not mine. I just found it on the on the web and here we are. I think they're going for complete answers, as in complete sentences with subject, verb, and all of that. And writing it is if you wanted a formal English teacher, they would say, okay, well, where is the subject? Who is writing it? <clears throat> but I got to tell you, if we were in an informal situation, just out on the street, we're not talking about quizzes or tests. If I was riding a bicycle, you came up to me and said, hey, what are you doing with my bicycle? And I said, riding it. <laughs> it's obvious I'm riding it, right? I would say that's just fine for informal English. However, here they're looking for formal English with complete sentences. I know. Informal English is sometimes more exciting, but here we go. Next question. Aha! All right, let me... Ooh, this is a little bit longer one. All right. Oh, Olga Svetova, no, no need to apologize. I, I, I mean, informal English is probably used just as much as formal English. So here we go. Uh, let's see if I can move it. It says, turn right at the next intersection, then go straight for about two kilometers. Go mm, the school and the supermarket and then turn left. And I'm not sure if the blue is distracting or if it's okay, but there's the question. And the answers A would be go to the school, B go through the school, C go at the school, D go past the school, or E go after the school. All right. Let's hear the music. Hmm. Okay, and um, I can hear the music. Can you guys hear the music? <laughs> it would be kind of silly if I'm just listening to it myself. So let me know in the comments. Can you hear the music? I'm going to type it. I'm going to put my Apple. Let's see. I'm going to say, just checking. Can you guys hear the music? Aha. Uh -huh. Lilia Andrichuk says, yes. Okay, good. <laughs> of course, says Mustafa. Wonderful. Okay. I was afraid for a moment that I was the only one hearing the music. You might think I'm a little crazy. Okay. All right. So in this situation, the person is giving instructions, right? How to get somewhere. So maybe they're like, you know, uh, how do I get to the bank? Or how do I get to the, the, the pizza restaurant, right? So the other person says, okay, turn right at the next intersection, then go straight for about two kilometers. Well, if they're going in two kilometers, let's hope the person is in their car or on their motorcycle, or if they're walking, it's going to take a little while. All right, go mm, the school and the supermarket and then turn left. Hmm. Well, let's see. There's only one answer here that makes sense to me, and it's D. That's what I would choose. And I'm looking back, I see D's, I see a couple B's. All right, so let's take a look. Go to the school and the supermarket, then turn left. Hmm, if we put two in there, then it kind of represents that the school is the destination, but it's not because then we still have more directions, then turn left. Go through the school, well, that would be cool. If you have a superpower and you can teleport or, or blast through the walls of the school, through is like, you know, go through the wall. 
unless it's like a huge school and they have like maybe an archway or something but i don't think that's super common go at the school like drive at it like you're attacking it eh. go after the school eh, not working i'm going for d i'm checking the answer here we go ah Woo! yes okay we got it right and i got a hair in my eye <laughs> okay all right so let's take a look so the correct answer is d passed all right so once again the idea is he's including or she is including the school and the supermarket in their instructions because they're good reference points right they're landmarks let's take a look at landmarks just to kind of give an idea landmarks all right okay so these are famous landmarks right if you say uh the pizza restaurant is near the eiffel tower everyone's going to know where it is because it kind of stands out right okay but you could also have landmarks like you know uh, a post office maybe you could have like the big tree i mean you could have anything right you just need a point of reference and let's take a look to make sure let's look in the dictionary landmark all right love google dictionary Ooh, and it's like the scientific meaning so many words here we go let's see if you guys can see it landmark an object or feature of a landscape or town that is easily seen and recognized from a distance especially one that enables someone to establish their location wow that's a mouthful <laughs> so uh, i'll try to summarize Landmark is basically a place that is probably well known to people and it's easy to see, right? And you can use it as a point of reference. All right. Okay, so let's go back to the question. All right, so congratulations to everyone who got the answer correct. Ah, Leila Almeida says, good morning. Good morning. Alina Mee says, hi, I have started English channel. Share your experience in comments. Okay. Sounds nice. Sounds lovely. Let's go to the next question. All right. Ooh, let me line it up. Okay, once again, we're looking for a fill in the blank. We're going to put something in there. Ooh, we have a question. Oh, no, I can't go back. <laughs> Here we go. Mustafa RZ says, if there was toward in options, was it true? Hmm. I would need more information on where you're putting toward in the... Uh, in the the question all right so we're going to move forward on this one it says Shh, please don't talk so loudly the baby a sleeps b is sleeping c are sleeping d sleeping or e sleeping is let's hear some music here we go Ooh, yes All right, I'm going to cut the music short because you guys attacked that question like a ferocious tiger. Mm-hmm. All right, so I see B, 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 B. Wow, maybe this question is too easy. Uh-huh. All right, let's take a look. So uh, the situation is, let's try to put a picture in our mind, okay? Baby sleeping. All right? Oh, how nice. How cute right so we have a baby sleeping and the parents are probably or the caretaker whoever's probably watching checking on them someone comes in and they start making noise or their cell phone rings and they're like shh, shh the baby's sleeping right so shh, please don't talk so loud the baby's sleeping the baby <laughs> is sleeping right okay we can't say well let's check the answer first here we go everyone says b i'm gonna follow your advice <gasps> right okay so let's quick explain the ones that don't make sense first the correct answer is b is sleeping so it's happening right now right now the baby is sleeping it's an ongoing action in the present all right shh, shh. it's very common to just you know tell someone to lower the volume or to you know don't talk so loud please don't talk so loud the baby sleeps eh 
Well, it's simple present, but it's not really telling us that it's ongoing and, you know, still happening. Are sleeping, how many babies are we talking about? As far as I can tell, it just says one, the baby, so C doesn't work. Sleeping, the baby sleeping. True, but we need, <laughs> we need a helping verb. We need a little verb in there that can connect it together. The baby sleeping is, sounds like Yoda from uh, Star Wars, uh, who he like twists his sentences around, right? Layla Almeida says one baby, that's right. So the answer is B, is sleeping. Next question. Okay, I wonder if I should start the music first because you guys like, you see it and you're like, oh, I have to do it. All right, here we go. All right. Okay, fill in the blank. <clears throat> Pamela, mm, a big lunch and now she's sleepy. A, eats. B, eaten. C, eating. D, ate. E, eat. All right, here's your music. Let me know in the comments your answer. All right, hopefully they give us some tougher questions, huh? Okay, all right, let's take a look. Pamela, a big lunch, and now she's sleepy. And I'm gonna go straight with you guys' answers <clears throat> because, uh, ooh, everyone's saying D. Mustafa says has eaten. I think he's trying to make it extra complicated. Wonderful. Okay, so D. All right, let's take a look. Everyone says D, so I'm going to follow your advice. I hope you don't make me look silly. Here we go. D, check answer. Aha, yes, it's right. And why is it right? Well, first, let's set up the situation. Pamela, something, a big lunch. So goodbye, baby sleeping. Hello, let's go. Huge, huge lunch. All right. Oh, yeah, Pam <laughs> Pamela. She has a large appetite and she can eat a lot of food, right? So she was chowing down on some a big meal. Ooh, maybe a huge pizza. You guys see the big pizza? She chowed down and she's like, ah, oh, this is the best pizza in the world. It's so delicious, it's scrumptious. Ooh, let's find out other words for delicious, shall we? Mm-hmm. Okay, delicious. Let's look at some synonyms. I love you, Google. All right. Synonyms for delicious. Here we go. Let's hear it. Delicious. Ah. Delicious. Ooh, learn to pronounce. That's new. I haven't seen that. Cool. Another tool that you guys can use with Google. Okay. So here are synonyms for delicious. Mouthwatering. Appetizing. Tasty. Flavorsome. Flavorful. Delectable. Toothsome. Inviting. Very enjoyable, very palatable, succulent, luscious, rich, sweet, savory, piquant. I don't know that one. Huh. Huh. Well, let's look it up. Here we go. We're going to boost my vocabulary as well. Who says the teacher can't learn something too? Piquant. All right. Nice. Having a pleasantly sharp taste or appetizing flavor. Spicy, tangy, spiced, peppery, hot. Flavorsome. Oh, pe Let's see how they say it. Piquant. 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 Wow, I just learned a new word. Thanks to you guys. All right. So anyway, so we had Pamela. She's chowing down. Chowing down means to like eat like a tiger. <laughs> if someone's chowing down, they're attacking their food. Okay, so she ate some heavy food. Heavy pizza or steak and fried food. And now she's sleepy, right? <laughs> you, me, says every day is a learning day. Mm, yes, we're always improving. All right, let's see. Uh, sleepy. So Pamela is sleepy, so we'll say a uh, sleepy woman. Okay. <laughs> So maybe this is Pamela. 
and she just ate that huge pizza and at the moment she's like oh it's a delicious pizza and now she's like ah all right and quickly we're going to see if we can have other words for sleepy all right let's take a look sleepy all right this should help you guys out maybe me too other synonyms for sleepy Drowsy, tired, somnolent, languid, languorous, heavy eyed, dozy, nodding, asleep on one's feet. Ooh, that's a nice one. So you're awake, but you're kind of like out of it because you, you're just like, uh, you're so unfocused. All right, so let's go back to the question. So Pamela D, she ate a big lunch and now she's sleepy. So this is a short sentence, but it's long enough to establish time frame, right? The time. At the end of the sentence, it says now, right? So something happened before, right? So we're looking some, for something that would be in a past tense, right? Eat, eh, not working. Eaten by itself is, is not going to work. We need like has eaten or had eaten to try to put it in the past, but it still might not work. Eating, no, not going to work. Eight, oh, it's in the past tense, right? So D works and eat, no, it doesn't work either. So D is the correct answer, eat. All right, so let's go to the next question. Ready? In three, two, one. Mm -hmm. Let me adjust. Okay. Woo. It's a short conversation. Do they ever arrive on time? Now we need to answer to it. A, option A, no they don't. B, yes, they usually does. C, no they not ever arrive on time. D, yes, occasionally they do. E, no, they ever arrive on time. Hmm, a little bit more difficult than last time. Let's see, what do you guys think? Oh, let's play the music. What was I forgetting? Here we go. Okay, this is an opportunity because I see mixed comments in, I see mixed answers in the comments, right? Ooh, so this is a great opportunity to learn. All right, okay, here we go. Do they ever arrive on time? Ooh, so we need a response to this question, right? Okay, so A, no, they don't. B, yes, they usually does, and so on. Okay, so when I look through, um, I'm going to choose my answer, and then I'm going to talk about it in a moment, and we'll see what happens, okay? All right, let's see. Do they ever arrive on time? Hmm, hmm, hmm. Uh-huh. I like D, and I will explain it in a moment. So my short conversation would be, do they ever arrive on time? Yes. Occasionally they do. So let's see. Do I look silly, or is this the right answer? Hmm right Woo! okay so let's talk about this one because i had we had mixed answers in uh like the, the comments right and let's see if we can explain why some of them are incorrect do they ever arrive on time okay first we'll establish we're waiting for people right or else we're talking about the habits of certain people maybe we're talking about our neighbors and we invite them over for dinner once in a while and then our, our family members like they're late do they ever arrive on time, right? So we're talking about habitual actions in the past, right? Do they ever arrive on time? Uh, you know, do they, uh, do they respect the time and all that? So A looks actually good at the beginning. No, they don't because it's they. We had they, so we're matching up the subjects. But ah, there's a punctuation error. There's supposed to be an apostrophe for don't. Because don't is a contraction, right? Where you put do not together and it becomes don't. So there's supposed to be apostrophe T. Mm, so close, but so far. Do they ever arrive on time? Yes, they usually does. Well, 
this part looks good, but does? Oh, you're kidding me. No, it doesn't work because uh, it's they, right? So we need a do. We don't need a does. All right. Ooh, we got lots of comments. Da, 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 da. Ah, Mustafa RZ says we should take notice of punctuation. <laughs> right? It looks good, but those small little things can make a big difference. Okay, see? No, they not ever arrive on time. Hmm. Well, you wouldn't say no, they not. You would say no, they don't. No, they don't ever arrive on time. But it doesn't say don't. It says not, so it's not right. And we know that D is correct. E, they ever arrive on time. Hmm. Well, we're not looking for ever. We're looking for a negative. We're looking for never, right? So if it said, do they ever arrive on time? No, they never arrive on time. It would be right. But it's ever not working. All right. So D is the, is the right one. Occasionally is an adverb of frequency. So we're kind of measuring how much or how often, right? So occasionally is like sometimes, right? It's not yes. It's not no. <laughs> Mustafa RZ says he is sleepy too. <laughs> right. Uh, and Leila Almeida says negative never. Right. Oh, Mustafa RZ on the picture. <laughs> He's the most bored English teacher I think I've ever seen. I think uh, he needs to get glasses like mine. Mm hmm. Okay, so occasionally is an adverb of frequency. Let's find other ways to say occasionally. All right. Oop, let me adjust. All right. Let's hear how it's pronounced. Occasionally. Occasionally. Mm -hmm. Occasionally. All right. So here we go. At infrequent or irregular interval intervals. Now and then. All right. Ooh, synonyms. Sometimes, from time to time, every now and then, every now and again, at times, and so on. Right. So occasionally, yes. Mustafa Arzi says from time to time, sometimes. Ah, you, me says A was very subtle. <laughs> I think they tricked some of us. Uh huh. All right. So D is the correct answer, occasionally. In other words, you could say, yes, sometimes they do. You know, as in sometimes they arrive on time, but then you could go the opposite way too. Sometimes they're late or they don't even call or they don't show up. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's move down to the green button. Next question. Here we go. Ooh, I got to make a comment. Burhan Ahmad says rarely. Hmm. That would be even even stronger than occasionally. So if we had to do percentages, occasionally could be what? Maybe anywhere from like 40%, 50%, 60%, right? That it happens. So sometimes, rarely, if you say rarely, ooh, now you're getting up to hardly ever. It doesn't happen much. Very infrequent. So rarely is like, how often does it happen? Rarely, like 10%, 5%, even 3%, hardly ever. Okay. Yes, Mustafa RZ says rarely 5%. Uh-huh. Could be even less. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Next question. I can feel the excitement. Here we go. All right. Ah, the milk. <laughs> the milk is the refrigerator. A, to, B, of, C, at, D, in, or E, from. All right, here's your music. Okay, all right. 
So I like I kind of like these quizzes because they mix up the questions. Some are easy, some are difficult, some are not so much. Now this is one which should boost your confidence. Right? <laughs> and I think everybody put D, and I think it's kind of an obvious answer. And we're talking about the location of the milk, right? So if we want a visual, we'll say goodbye to sleepy the sleepy woman, and we'll say milk in the refrigerator. All right. Okay. So depending on what country you live in, yeah, that will depend on the jug or the the container. Uh, a jug of milk is very common in the United States. Jug of milk. Uh huh. So I remember growing up and every week or every two weeks we would go and we'd buy a jug of milk because it's delicious. Mm hmm. All right. In other countries, they might use like a liter of milk. All right. So it could be in a glass jar. It could be in like a plastic container. Right. So these are different uh, containers for milk, right? See, it's an easy question, but we can still explore pictures. <laughs> okay, so the answer D, let's check. Hooray, okay. And just kind of simple, uh, milk, we're looking for the location, right? So what is the location of the milk? Well, or and where is the milk? It's in the refrigerator. Is it to the refrigerator? No, we'd have to change it. Like we could say something, uh, milk is, <clears throat> the milk is going to the refrigerator, like it's moving towards it, but that's not what we're looking for. The milk is of the refrigerator. That would be strange, as in like it's from the refrigerator you know, or part of it, not work. Milk is at the refrigerator. Eh. Not quite right, no, and it's in, right? And it's not from. Okay. I see Layla Almeida says milk is uncountable. Right. So you don't say you don't say six milk, you don't say one thousand milk, you might say one hundred glasses of milk, uh one hundred jugs of milk, one hundred containers of milk, but you won't put a number in front of milk because it's uncountable. It's like rice or water. Okay. Next question. Here we go. Let's see. T's you me says T's nationality is refrigerator. Hmm. I'm not sure what that means. T's nationality is refrigerator. Ah, because it's inside the refrigerator. Uh huh. All right. All right. Let's go to the next question and hopefully we'll get something more challenging. All right. Let's take a look. All right. Here we go. Fill in the blank. I'm sorry. You will just have to A. Wait. B. Avoid. C. Like. D. Attempt. E. Find. Hmm. Here's some music. Okay, I see a lot of A's in the comments. All right, so first let's set up our situation. I'm sorry, you will just have to. Hmm, well, let's see, I suppose I can't. Yes, I can. Let's pretend we're at the doctor's office. We'll say long line at the doctor's office. Right? Uh. Not quite what I'm looking for. Maybe this one. Okay, so there's a long line at the doctor's office. Let's see, maybe we'll try a long line at the store. Oh, at Walmart, how about that, Walmart. Walmart is a very common store in the United States. Okay, so this one is a long line at customer service. Maybe people want to return an item at Walmart, right? Or maybe they have a broken item. Uh, maybe they want to get a refund or something like that. So there's a long line at customer service. 
And if someone comes running up and they, they say, hey, I have an emergency. I need to go first. I need to go first. Well, the person is probably, oh, probably, oh, we'll get to it in a sec, Layla. See, it says, she'll say, I'm sorry, you will just have to. Well, let's see. Everybody said A, so we'll do it. I'll do A. Let's check the answer. All right, you guys are awesome. So A is the correct answer, wait. So once again, if you're in a line and you try to cut, you try to go in front of someone and you say, oh, my, my situation is so important, they're probably going to say to you, I'm sorry, you will just have to wait. And if they keep pushing, they're going to say, hey, buddy, get to the back of the line. Mm-hmm. All right, let's see. Mustafa RZ says, when you cook a meal, others have to eat it and it is not yummy. They say it's not for eating. You tell them you will just have to. <laughs> you will just have to like it. Mm -hmm. That's good. I love the imagination. You can, we can change the situation to fit a context. Okay, so Layla Almeida says, attempt. What does it mean? All right, attempt. Attempt means to try to do something, right? Let's see. Uh, trying to see if we can have a picture that would help. Attempt the jump, maybe. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's see. Attempt. It's like, okay. So this guy is attempting. He hasn't finished yet. He's attempting to jump off the cliff and hopefully he has a parachute and lands on the bottom. Attempting means to try something, right? Yes. Yes. Attempt is the same as to try. Yes, very similar. All right. So let's put it into the dictionary. Attempt. All right. Let's take a look. And we're going to use a verb. There we go. Attempt. Let's hear the pronunciation. Attempt. 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 All right. Make an effort to achieve or complete something, typically a difficult task or action. All right. So if, if I said this guy's attempting to set the world record of the most hot dogs eaten while parachuting down to the ground, I would say he's attempting, he's trying to do something difficult. All right. So, attempt, if we put it in the sentence, I'm sorry, you would just have to attempt. Mm, not so much. I, I'm sorry, you would just have to avoid. No, avoid means to go away from someone or to stay away from something or choose an option which keeps you away from something else. All right, so on this one, none of the other answers really make sense. So this is the best one. I'm sorry, you will just have to wait, right? Be patient. Okay. All right, here we go. Da, da, da. Let's do the next question. Here we go. I can see you guys. You're at the edge of your computer. You're like, oh, I can't wait. I can't wait. Here we go. All right. Paul can't touch the ceiling because he is too... Hmm. All right. A, shortening. B, shortness. C, shorten, D, shortly, or E, short. Interesting. All right, let's hear some music. All right, I see a lot of E's in the comments. All right, this is kind of interesting because they're all using different variations that contain the word short, right? Okay, so we'll talk about them, but I think I'm gonna agree with you guys and we're gonna go with E, we're gonna check the answer. Surprise, surprise, we are right. Okay, I think this question, well, let's read the full sentence. Paul can't touch the ceiling because he is too short. Maybe this is Paul, and he's frustrated, so he's tired, and he's just like, uh, I can't touch the ceiling, and I, I'm tired of being short. Okay. 
<laughs> Mustafa RZ is using an idiom. Mm, yes. In a nutshell, he is a dwarf. Yes. Let's just make sure everyone understands what is a dwarf. Here we go. Dwarf. All right. So this is a dwarf. It's like a short person. And they're common to see in, like, I think Lord of the Rings and, like, the fantasy kind of movies, right? Okay. So short, I think everyone understands, just the opposite of tall, right? And let's see if there's any synonyms for short that might be useful. Okay. All right. Not so many synonyms, but still worth it. Short. Short. Okay. Small, little, tiny, minuscule, teeny, teeny weeny. <laughs> Low, squat, stubby, miniature, dwarf. Uh-huh. Nice work, Mustafa. Do dwarf. Okay. So that's short. And maybe we'll just get a, a visual short person. Uh-huh. So this lady, she's like, uh-huh. You're quite tall, ma'am. All right, let's take a look. So I think the interesting opportunity in this question is to explain the other words, right? To make sure we understand them. Shortening. All right. Well, let's get try to get a visual because I have an idea of shortening that it's a cooking. It's for cooking, shortening. All right, shortening, it is kind of ingredient for cooking. Cook. <laughs> I am not a chef. So let's go straight to the dictionary. All right. Ah, it's fat. Let's hear it. Shortening. 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 Nice. Butter or other fat used for making pastry or bread. Mm-hmm. Right. So very interesting. So this is shortening, and it's probably not very healthy <laughs> because it's probably pure fat, but it makes the bread taste mm, also delicious. Okay, so that is shortening. It's a baking ingredient, right? Shortness. Okay, we're describing time frame, right? Uh, it's common to hear shortness of breath. All right, shortness of breath. Okay. So someone, okay, maybe we'll do this lady over here. Uh, let's just be honest and we'll say she's probably not in very good shape. She looks like she has exercise clothes on, but her body structure and stuff, she may be a bit overweight. So it's difficult uh, for her to run very far or very fast. So her ability to keep exercising is probably improving. That's wonderful. But right now, she gets tired very quickly. And then it's difficult for her to breathe. Aha! Uh -huh. That's when we talk about shortness of breath. Mm. So if you go into the doctor and you're talking to them, and you say, hey doc, I've been noticing lately that I have a shortness of breath, then maybe that's a symptom, right? That's a part of your medical condition. Maybe you need more exercise, or maybe there's something more serious. I don't know. But shortness of breath, just means you don't have much stamina. You don't have the ability to keep exercising and keep moving forward, right? Your body gets tired and you're like, oh, oh, oh. right. All right, here we go. Shorten just means to make shorter. <laughs> if you shorten something, you make it shorter, all right? Shortly is I will be there shortly. It's like soon. I will be at your house shortly. Okay, all right. So Paul can't touch the ceiling because he is too short. All right. Here we go. Next question, moving forward. All right. I will speak, hmm, Suzanne, when I see her. A in, B to, C around, D at, or E toward. All right. So put your answer in the comment. I'll play some music. All right, I see a lot of B's, so we're gonna speed through this one so we can hopefully get to an, a more difficult question. All right, so I will speak, hmm, Suzanne, when I see her. 
Ooh, we have a lot of prepositions here, don't we? Uh -huh. All right, everyone's saying B. Let's see. Olga says, I, B, though it might be interesting to talk in or around, Suzanne. <laughs> uh, yes, well, I guess we'll talk about the possibilities in a moment. <laughs> First, I will speak mm, Susan when I see her. Okay, I'm going to go with you guys and we'll go with B. Two, right? All right. Yay, we're correct. All right, awesome. But for some reason, this dude doesn't look very excited. Well, no worries. All right, so the answer, I will speak to Susan when I see her. You know, maybe there's something we need to chat about and I need to inform Susan of something, so I'll speak to her. I'm directing my words to her in her direction. Okay, uh, let's take a look at the incorrect answers. <laughs> you, me says, I talked around Susan, Suzanne once. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering, is it Suzanne or is it Susan? Probably Suzanne, right? I think Susan is S-U-S-A-N. Okay, so if you said, and I'm going to give you the other options and I'm going to tell you what image or puts, what imagination, what pops into my head when I say this, okay? I will speak in Susan when I see her. Now, it could be kind of very strange as in like you're going <laughs> to open her mouth or something and speak like ah in her mouth. It, it, it has the idea of something inside her body and that just is kind of creepy. So B was the right answer. I will speak around Susan when I see her. Well, maybe Susan, <laughs> let's see, around. Maybe uh, this is Susan, right? And I need to talk to someone on the other side of Susan. So I speak around her. <laughs> I direct my words around her, which would be kind of strange. Okay, I will speak at Susan when I see her. Ooh. This makes me think that someone is kind of upset with Susan, right? I will speak at her, but it still sounds weird. All right, I will speak towards Susan when I see her. Mm. It sounds like you're, you're directing <laughs> the flow of your words, the air that's coming from your mouth, you're directing it toward her, and there's probably no need. You can just speak to her. She'll hear you. All right. Uh-huh. Yumi says yell at her. Mm-hmm. Okay. <clears throat> let's see here right oh tell you what if you can <laughs> bear with me for about maybe just a minute I need to go use the restroom really quick so I'm <laughs> if I don't I'm gonna be hopping on my seat so just give me a moment and I'm gonna play the music and I'll be right back Okay. <laughs> All right. This is the interesting thing about live lessons. When you pre-record a video, you don't have to really worry about going to the bathroom. But when you're when you're live, mm, things happen. Since we're on the subject, let's take a look at other ways to say bathroom. <laughs> All right. Oh. All right. Here we go. Bathroom. Okay, so bathroom is a room containing a toilet. There, yeah, we know that. Synonyms: washroom, toilet, ladies or men's room, restroom, lavatory, powder room. Powder room is probably going to be more for women when they put their makeup on. Comfort station. Oh, that's kind of a new one to me. Urinal, water closet, uh, waste, 
WC, I guess, for water closet. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's go back. And we're going to go to the next question. All right, I'm going to do one more question and then my time is up and I'm going to have to go. So here we go. Let's hope it's a good one. Ooh, a question. So we have to put in the first part of the question. So here we go. It's a fill in the blank. Mm, the all natural bread. Yes, it was very good. Okay, choices A. Did you try the all-natural bread? Did try the all-natural bread? Tried you the all-natural bread? Did you try the all-natural bread? Did you tried the all-natural bread? Hmm. All right, here's your music. Okay, I see a lot of D's in the comments. All right, maybe this question was too easy. So basically, we're just filling in and completing the question because there are some words missing at the beginning. All right, everyone is saying D. All right, Mustafa RZ says, thank you guys. Have a gorgeous day. Likewise, have a wonderful day. Okay, so everyone says D. So I'm going to check D and let's take a look. I'm going to trust you guys. All right, let's check the answer. So it would be, did you try the all-natural bread? Let's see if it's right. Da, 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 it's right. Okay. So the correct answer is D. Did you try the all-natural bread? Well, I think we have an opportunity here to see some all-natural bread. Mm-hmm. Okay, goodbye, shortness. Of <gasps> Maybe the people here need to start eating all-natural bread. Hmm, I think so. It's connected with good health. Okay, so the idea behind all natural bread is that it does not have a lot of extra non-essential unhealthy ingredients, right? So they use a lot of whole grain. Uh, they use a lot of natural parts, right? And they don't add a lot of preservatives and extra things that might take it, make it taste really nice. But this is more natural, right? All right, so it's good. It's good. It tastes, I I guess I'll be honest, it doesn't taste as nice as like white bread or some of the other breads with more butter and stuff in it. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's good. It's healthy. It's wonderful. <laughs> if you have a shortness of breath, it might be a good idea to uh, eat more all natural bread. Okay, so mm, the all natural bread, yes, it was very good. Did you try it? All right, it was good. Okay, all right, so that question, uh, it just was unfulfilling. I think I need to do another one. I, I need something a little more challenging. Okay, here we go. Next question. Ooh, this could be maybe a good one. All right, I love the opportunity. Were you tired after the trip in the mountains? Hmm. So we're answering this question and it's going to be a full answer. Ah, here we go. Were you tired after the trip in the mountains? A. We was tired and also wet from the rain. B. Yes, I was very tired. C. We been tired and hungry. D. Yes, we were, but we were happy. E. Yes, and we were happy to be home. Ooh. Were you tired after the trip in the mountains? Let's see what you guys do with this one. I will help you out with some beautiful music.
Okay. I see a lot of D's and oh, I see a B as well. Okay. Well, this one is a little bit more complex because it has longer answers and stuff. So were you tired after the trip in the mountains? All right. I'm going to let you guys answer and I see so many. Aha. Uh -huh, yes. You me says, how come all the objectives have D as the best choice? It's not my website. Maybe you can you can talk to easyenglish.com and <laughs> What's up with all the answers uh D? <laughs> okay, let's see. Were you tired after the trip in the mountains? All right. Everyone well most of you guys say say D, so let's check it out. Is it right? All right. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. All right, let's take a look. All right, you guys are awesome. All right, so D, yes, we were, but we were happy. Okay, so let's break it apart and see where we can find the problems with the other answers. Were you tired after the trip in the mountains? Okay. We was tired. Ah, immediately it doesn't work because it needs to be we were tired. Mm, not so much. Yes, was I very tired? It doesn't work because we need to switch around I and was. Yes, I was very tired. Then it would be nice. So it doesn't work. All right. We been tired and hungry. No, not going to work. Uh, we were tired and hungry. We felt tired and hungry. Uh, yeah, Ben just doesn't work there, right? All right, let's see. And D was the right answer. Yes, and we were happy to be to home. Huh? Wow, if you just look at it just quick, right? You might not notice that there are two twos. Two twos. So E doesn't work either. Yes, and we were happy to be to home. Mm. So D was the right one. Uh, were you tired after the trip in the mountains? Yes, we were, but we were happy. So let's get a visual in our mind. Goodbye, all natural bread. And let's look up trip uh, in the mountains. Ooh, looks so nice, All right? Yes, I would like to go. Uh huh. The twenty best mountains in the world. Mmm, looks delicious and beautiful. Great views and everything. Okay, so maybe they were hiking around the mountains and uh, they're happy to be there and they're taking pictures and all that stuff. Olga Svetova says it would be great to have a trip in the mountains. Uh huh. Yes. I see. Uh, Leila Almeida says punctuation letter D is wrong. Let's take a look. Yes, we were, but we were happy. All right. So there's there are two commas in here. Well, let's start at the bigger part. It ends with a period because it's a statement, right? It's de it's a declarative sentence. We have two commas in here because when you say the sentence, yes, we were, but we were happy. There is what I would say a natural pause. So you, you don't say, yes, we were, but we were happy. You say, yes, we were, but we, we were happy. So we're using the commas to show that we pause. We stop for a moment when we're speaking, right? There's a natural pause in the communication, all right? Huh? So yes, I, I see, Leila Meda would like letter D, but punctuation is wrong. Well, actually the punctuation is right. It's just a natural pause. So I'm going to type in the comments. It's a natural pause. Natural pause when speaking. So we put commas before and after. All right. Okay. Right. And there you go. Raghad says before the conjunction, but it would be the conjunction. Conjunction is just a word that puts two parts of a sentence together or two separate thoughts together. It kind of joins them, right? Uh, so yes, we were, but we were happy. Okay, so that is the correct answer. And it was a trip in the mountains. You know, I've always been curious to go to the Swiss Alps. Let's take a look. We'll take an internet journey to the Swiss Alps. Oh yeah, well, this would be nice. Ooh. Would take lots of pictures. Yes, I would. Okay. All right. So that is it for the quizzes today because I have to 
go and work on some other projects. So let's take a look and let's see what did we do today, right? So what did we accomplish in this live lesson? Well, we used, oh, it's, my head is cutting it off. All right, we, I'll go to the top one. All right, we used online exercises to test and improve our English. Some were difficult, so, well, some were challenging, some were like really simple, but it's always an opportunity to look at pictures <laughs> and uh, explore similar or synonyms. Then we explored and explained vocabulary, sure. And did we have some fun? Well, I don't know about you guys, but whenever I put on my glasses, I usually have a wonderful time. Okay, so if you guys enjoyed this, make sure to subscribe. Oh, let's watch the animation. Ooh, ah, ooh, <laughs> ah. <laughs> oh, that never gets old for me. Ah, okay, anyway, uh, here is our motto, improve your English, become more valuable. All right, so what happens when we become more valuable, when we have more skills? Well, first it makes our lives much better. Then it, uh, let's see, Leila May says, I see nothing now. Hmm. Can you guys see on the screen, improve your English, become more valuable? See, there's the quiz, and this should be, the image is gone. Do, 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 do. Let's see. So Burhan Ahmad says yes, as in yes, you can see me, or yes, the image is gone. I'm curious. If there's a problem, I can fix it. What does yeah mean? So can you, let me see. <laughs> can you see me and the screen? Oh, we can see. Okay, wonderful, wonderful. Thank you. Okay, so let me continue my speech. <laughs> All right. So here we go. Uh, valuable. When we become more valuable, what happens? Well, in our personal lives, suddenly we have a better life because we're able to create more value for ourselves. But when we become more valuable, it's like we radiate. We put out value to the people around us, right? So we improve the people's lives around us. And one way, maybe if it's your career goal or your goal to live in another country or to teach your kids or whatever, if you improve your English, it can make you more valuable, more skillful and able to improve your life and the, people of, the lives of the people around you. Okay. All right, so that is it for today. I want to say thank you for joining. And this was an experiment, and I thought it went pretty well. I like the website where they have questions. I'm going to try to look for different websites as well to try to have more quizzes and activities and stuff like that. So thank you for joining. I'm going to play a little bit of music at the end, and then I'm out of here. So let me type in the comments. Thank you for joining. I'll play the music. Here we go.